this is beers and ideas, but you appear to have something masquerading as a uh, as beer. What's that you've got here? I don't know what you're referring to because that's a bottle of old peculiarly, peculiarly, ah. peculiar, and the legendary ale, 5.6 percent, legendary. And that wasn't uh, that wasn't the can that wasn't the can you had in your hands uh, moment er, moments earlier. Look at that! Look at that glass. That's an epic tankard. The tankard. Are and you drinking just that done. an alcohol it, it, free hard. beer and a beer? It's hard to do the little finger. Um. Okay. Okay. I think that I think that was just dandelion and burdock. I don't think it was all peculiar at all. Is that real Heineken or like no percent Heineken? Well, it is it's still real Heineken. Now, if, we're, if we're talking, what, what is reality? Are we, are we going straight in the philosophy? <laughs> what is reality? In, 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 do you know what I mean? But it is Heineken. I'm gonna. I'm going to backtrack here because if somebody's not drinking, we should leave them alone to their their, their non-alcohol because it's 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 tantamount to bullying to be going. Oh, I I see what you're drinking there. I look, uh, we, drinking yeah, we, your, we, but but wait, wait a second, not, wait a second. If somebody wants to drink an alcohol-free drink alongside a tankhead, alongside a bottle of real beer, <laughs> I think that still should be ridiculed. I think the person that says, "Oh, guys, I'm not drinking tonight," but there's a strange. Parade of different drinks. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, okay, okay. I, I'll give I'll give an explanation. Okay, I have chosen. Well, I have chosen in recent months um, to cut down on my alcohol consumption because I'm I don't know. I'm, let, let's get this out there on the internet because people need to know this. I am actually doing a half Iron Man in July, so I need I need I need, I need <laughs> the end. I need it. <laughs> The man. I'm doing a man. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing a man. Um so I am actually out cycling. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I'm doing fifty miles. So um I can't drink too much if I'm gonna do that. That's because good. I would I wouldn't get out of bed. Good. So I'm I'm That's good. And but I didn't wanna I didn't wanna do a George Bull and drink some water. George's last time. So I thought oh, I'd get myself a bottle of old peculiar to start off with. And then I thought I'd jump onto the Heineken's, the little no percenters. So every other Good sip, you. every other sip's an alcohol-free sip. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy me all peculiar, mm. and then I'll just go into the. Because I've realised I act drunk when I'm sober, so I don't need alcohol <laughs> to kind of to kind of help us along the way. I think I'm just permanent. <laughs> I'm just thinking it's no other wonder people start watching our videos and bail after about a minute and a half, is it? You know what I mean? Can't handle the brilliance. So, yeah, so why I've chosen O Peculiar is because this, this was actually brewed in Simonside, where, where I live now. There's an old brewing uh-huh. house um, called the O Peculiar uh, Thixons. It's uh, Simon in South Shields. So, um, and there's a little fella on, uh, on his knees. Um, and he's praying to somebody if we can see on the camera mate. oh yeah and that is actually um, George people Excellent. don't know this when I first met George he, he was living in Marsden Cliffs um, <laughs> and he looked a lot like that and I helped him out and I trained him in this fine human being you see before you today excellent and, uh, and put this, and it's finished. Place. Does he have, no, no, does he no, have no. a let? Does he ever come up for air? No, I'm so good. And and the same place is where the brew old peculiar now because and they named it old peculiar because George was a bit peculiar at the time. Um, uh, so that's what so that's what it is. This this is an homage, homage, a homage. to George Paul. Wonderful. I'm drinking. Have you st- have you finished that? I'm drinking. I'm drinking uh, Stewart Brewing's Small Giant American Pale Ale because I really like the can. The cans are made from old radiators, flattened and rolled out, made from old what? radiators. And, appar- and apparently, apparently, uh, this was Carl Popper's favourite brew. Was it a corner radiator from Fichtenstein? No, it was one of the ceiling radiators that you mentioned last time. <laughs> <laughs> George, <laughs> I, I, I've not got much of a story in mind. I'm I'm drinking McEwen's Champion. Oh, nice! 
Um, oh, George, there must be a story behind that. Well, it's won awards. I know that. It, it's a gold medal winner, and it's quite strong. It's 7.3 volume. Go away. And one little thing I could say is in some countries, um, alcohol content is measured in Play Doh. How oh. apt? How many so no, no, is that? I don't, I don't, I don't, it's a percentage. So when I you look, just make when, it up, George. I don't think anyone's really testing anything out here. Just, no, just no, 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 I'm, I'm, this is real. So, Steve, when you go to your, next time you go to your posh BS outlet, Aye. see if any Aye. have played or is a measure of alcohol content. Right. I'll, I'll ask them that. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it's an, it's inevitable because everything, everything, everything goes back to the, 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 the philosophers of days of yore, doesn't it? So they create everything. So, do you think that one day they'll be like, uh, they'll be measured in like a Jamie or a George or a Stephen content? Unlikely. <laughs> in two and a half thousand years' time, there'll be someone sitting there, and because this will be, this will be like on the in your mind rather than on the screen, because that's how much we would advance. And they'll be saying there'll be three three lads saying, "Well, did you know that beer is actually measured in the Jamie content?" No, there'll be there'll be you know you know like back in the day when people used to go for like duels, you know, you used to challenge somebody to a duel. Sometime in the future, people will challenge each other to a scorer. And and the the and, and the game the game goes like this. Somebody has to start talking and they've got to keep talking to the point where nobody can get another word in. And as soon as the other person manages to get a word in, then they've defeated the scorer. So yeah, I challenge you to a scorer. I love it. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's what they're gonna do. Anyway, we'll have to use that in the record, <laughs> won't we? We we will. No, maybe not. Well, no, we will definitely, definitely, definitely. George, please save us from this. Okay. So some words that's, of wisdom. That's the beers. Time for the ideas. So this week we Jeez. are gonna look at something topical. We're gonna try and. Consider current politics. It's been a big week in politics. Mayoral elections, local elections, um, Scottish elections. Brexit's unfolding, isn't it? With battles in Jersey. A lot of the issues for a while are coming to the fore again. Um, and we're going to look at that through the lens of Plato's Republic. Um, but the slight difference, the slight interesting take we're going to have, which we don't go down the well trammeled pathway of other podcasts and YouTube sites. We're gonna successful cons- ones. So yeah, we wouldn't want to follow the successful money making ones. <laughs> I mean, Jamie, you're you're talking from your Beverly Hills apartment right there. And Stephen's clearly <laughs> overhanging the Amazon jungle in his treehouse. We've already made we've already made it. So, the Hanging Gods of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, as Stevens from. Exactly, exactly, Jamie. So we're going to look at it from the point of view of the other, the well, it's a dialogue between Socrates, other people, but the main combatant is Tracer Margus. And his basic premise is the opposite of uh, Socrates, is that virtue is good, you should aspire to virtue, justice, these things tonic forms. Basically, Theresa Marcus says that um, justice is, 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 is something that's made up by the strong to keep the, the weak sort of suppressed. And, and, and justice isn't good at all if you want to be a ruler. It's about fattening the flock, then culling it when you need. Um, and that's what success is. And if you don't do it, someone else will. It's just a, it's a complete sort of... Um, what do you call it? A Darwinian battle. Uh, just uh, survival the strongest, most adaptable. A bit of a Machiavelli sort of character. And I think I think this is this is an interesting um, lens to look at current politics. As we've got Boris Johnson, the expenses scandal, um, SNP perhaps um, unfolding. All of the um, confusing deals that have been done by the current government in the, the pandemic, how they how they've used their own power for the potentially their own own ends. And that's exactly exactly what Theresa Marcus is saying will happen. Basically if humans are involved, 
it's going to look like this. So you might as well not try to strive for anything. So, so was Socrates, um, Plato wrote, but Plato was writing Socrates as a character here. Um, was so was Socrates ask was was kind of um, formulating a question against that. Was that was was that what the Republic was in response to? Yeah, which is Marcus was saying. Is yeah, it, that, so that, that, to, that, to combat this, we're going to have this closed society. <clears throat> just just a bit, a bit of pop up creeping in there. <clears throat> we're going to have this this kind of closed structure of a society, and this is how we combat this because we can control what happens within people's minds and what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is interesting. Sorry, George. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I was just just a bit background, which I want you. You've all, I think you've always got to qualify. So Athens um, is a city-state uh, amongst a Greek um, nation, which wasn't Greek. Greece as it is now, it's just, it's it's basically the whole bottom corner of the Mediterranean, so Turkey and um, parts of Egypt. The whole, many countries were framed as Greece, a lot of separate independent cities. So our view of it is different. And by free people, what they mean is free men, so men that weren't slaves. So that, that's that's the historical um, 400 BC. That's where we've got to locate ourselves and what already was happening. Mm. And and I think, and it, and it wasn't a settled situation. There was um, oligarchs, not in terms of oil oligarchs, but oligarchs in the old sense, um, dictators. There's a very turbulent time. Um, but Athens... Um, it's in a, in, a, in a double-edged sword. So whilst everyone could vote, everyone goes to war together. The society still expects a lot from people. Um, so it's not your vote's not for free, basically. And obviously, in the end, that's what caught up to Socrates, convicted to death by his peers, um, mass jury, blah blah blah. So that brings a full st- just trying to locate when history in in the sort of sense. But mm. so Stephen, what what's your initial interesting- take on? Well, it's in, it's interesting. It's interesting that you, you you locate us in a in a particular point in history. Yet, as you were talking about various things there, uh, kind of Marx's ideas of of you know kind of oppression and the the fact that you know those that own the the means of production are kind of you know the the, the people who are in power and and everybody are just kind of almost slaves to that kind of that, that class. So that kind of when you were talking that through and talking about those kind of ideas, I kind of went. My head went went to to kind of Marx and 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 his ideas and and I must admit Marx is not somebody that I know a huge amount about but that's where it kind of went kind of almost and I think what's interesting with all of these philosophical ideas isn't it that that they, 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 they permeate through through all the various um, phases of of our human development don't we and and it strikes me it strikes me that that often we're trying to solve the same problems that we're that the people were trying to or, or contemplate the same problems people were <laughs> contemplating in, you know, in in ancient Rome, really, um, you know, um, and 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 it makes me wonder whether um, there is, you know, whether this whether ideas of natural order are, are the dominant force because here we are talking about Plato, then Marx, and then we could talk about it in terms of the politics of today, and we still have the same underpinning problem, don't we, of those that have it all, who make those that haven't got any of it kind of work at their behest and on their behalf. And do you think that the the, the problem with that is that because all the solutions deal with um, those who are working at their behest, and the, the, none of the solutions actually deal with the problem of you know those those, those people who are taking um, consuming so much of the resources that that's around. So so the <clears throat> the problem for um, capitalism, or the, the the problem for I don't know, the um, percentages of how so many percentage of um, a very small percentage of, of, of the world's population control the world's resources, um, and yet all the solutions that have been put forward in history have been dealt with by the masses. You know what I mean? So we need mm. we need to change to change them, rather than they need to change so so we can live. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> and I think I'm not saying we, as I'm, I'm just saying it, it's, it's humankind because I think there's there's people in the world today who are really suffering because of because of that system. Mm. 
um, and not dying because of that system. But everyone else needs to change, but they don't. And that's, that seems to be throughout the, th- throughout the system. Even, even what the example that you raised, George, you know, you had, what, what was the name of the character who was talking to Socrates? Tracer Marcus. Tracer Marcus. So he was saying, you know, because of these, these greedy people, um, that this is what's going to happen. And Socrates, in his wisdom, turned out, well, well, the masses need to change. So that doesn't that doesn't happen. Um, when there's a very there's a few people, there's a there's a small percentage of people, but the mass has to change, which which seems quite mm. quite bizarre. It's very interesting. I think um, one thing that was going through my mind, and sort of a, it's an idea I haven't properly formulated yet, but I think it sort of links to what you were saying, Stephen. I think if you follow the the, the political map of this country, if you go back two three hundred years, it was. The Duke of Norfolk, whoever else, the king were all in parliament together. They were making decisions. So they were the landowners. They were the, the people that had all the means of production. Then it was the mill owner. Then it was the Lord Armstrong. Then it was all these people. Now, increasingly, what we've got is you have people, Richard Branson, Bezos, um, the Tesla guy. To me, they seem completely apolitical. They've got no interest in politics as such. Um, and they almost operate on a global scale so no one can catch them out, in the, if you see what I mean. So um, labour conditions in China is not a big issue for um, Apple, do you know what I mean, politically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so there's this, for the first time ever, and I think particularly in UK politics, the big billionaires, I don't think are really that interested. I mean, I think there was some... There's some things with Brexit about, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll spin the roulette wheel on the stock market and we'll make a bit of money. But politically, uh, because they operate on a global scale, I think it's small cheese. I, I, don't, I don't think, and, and I wonder what that separation will look like, because it's twofold. The billionaires don't need a mass workforce, particularly um, because it's either zero-hour contracts or mm. they're not responsible for people. So they don't have that previously where, or let's say, say the the minimum wage went up in the mine or the minimum wage went up in the, in the mill well the, bloody, the wigs or whatever they would have gone they would have gone mad because they would have lost out the profit i don't think they care anymore um so that there's a dis there's a the the the, the, the marxist criticism i don't think hold, it increasingly doesn't hold there's something i don't quite understand and i think it kind of it maybe it blows a myth really that this is a monday problem is we have um, a <clears throat> system now, and, it, and our country is in how many trillions of pounds of debt, um, same as America, same as most, most countries in the world, they're in debt. They're in debt to whom is the question I would ask. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and so who holds the power? Who holds the power? And that's how capitalism works, <laughs> isn't it? And whether, whether there's, you know, you subscribe to some of the, um, some of the conspiracy theories, is that so, you know, one or two powers, uh, families who hold this amount of power, I, I don't know. But it's a, it's a case of people talk about this, this debt and who is it to? To who? Mm. And, and if, if, if we owe, if we owe billions of pounds to some, I don't know who it is, to some bank, um, how much power do they have over our state as a result of that? Well, not to go down the too much of an explanation route, but basically you've got to manage all the debt in little parcels, going to murky bondholders and and, and mm. international banking corporations. Jamie, it's all it's all like d- d- divided up, and it's leveraged against other risks. So, to use one asset to balance out um, other areas that might be exposed to, but it's just spread across the world. Um, mm. But ultimately, no one's accountable. You could take the view: does it really matter? Um, but eventually you have to sort of pay the piper, but debt is quite cheap at the moment. It isn't It isn't a problem. Mm. If interest rates went up to 10%, this is really exciting, this. If, it, if, 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 if interest rates... Just disclaimer, George is actually an accountant, so... If, if, if interest rates went up to 10%, we're, 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 it would be... It would be yeah. a, 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 they'd switch the lights off again. Um, but it's not a current problem. Um can I just, can I just interrupt? I know, I know, I know I've been criticised for this, but I have a rant brewing and it needs to come out. Come so, on. So this rant needs to come out, Stephen, so maybe just put some build-up music to this. Maybe a bit wrong. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this, is what, this, this is what's really pissing me off at the moment, 
and we have this this horrendous situation in India at the moment where people can't have enough oxygen to to fight this this um this this virus and people are dying that wouldn't die in, 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 in other countries because they've got access to these things. And people are saying, oh, we, need to sp- we need to spend some money, we need some charity work, we need some con- some governments to step in, we need this and we need that to pay for these ventilators or, or this oxygen to send it over to India. And the, the question that begs to me is that, hang on, you're asking us to pay for something, okay, but that means we've got to buy from somebody. That means it's, that means it's there. That means this oxygen is sitting somewhere waiting for us to give somebody some money to send it over. So how much do we value life when we're thinking, hang on, it's there, it just needs to go there. Why not, Why just cut this minimum up of, of trying, to, trying to make money for somebody else? And people are dying. It's, if oxygen is there and the need for oxygen is so great, let's just send it over. Why? Why? why why are we not kind of pressurising these people who are holding all this oxygen in, in warehouses, wherever it is, just to send it over? We'll sort the money out later. You know what I mean? So there's no nobody's, nobody's like losing, you know, a livelihood here. Why? Why are we doing this? Why? Why is nobody nobody like screaming and asking this question, thinking, why? Why are you asking for charity so we can make somebody some profit so they can send? Because it must be there. Run over. What? Well, I think I think well, it's it's interesting because I might take us into, into into something that we we were thinking of doing anyway here because the the the, the problem the problem is is that that we generally and I say we as a society we don't care because it's remote to us, it's not us, it's not it's not the people we care for, it's not the people around us who who would die, and it's it's in a it albeit the world is a small place, um, in terms of globalization and we can see what's happening in India, it's not. It's not affecting us in the here and now, and and I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here. Obviously, why give our oxygen, our money, our aid, our support to those people? They should sort their own stuff out. We cause because we might we might we we might need that oxygen, whether we need it or not. But we keep it because we might need that, and we might need it to save our people. And I think this is. Um, this is the position, isn't it, that people end up adopting when things are difficult. When things are difficult, people start to kind of become very kind of insular and start to to kind of restrict their think their moral thinking to what is going to impact on me. What's what's the impact on me if I go to hospital and I and there is no oxygen for me or my my mother or father or whatever, but because we've sent the oxygen to all the people over in India and I think that's the problem and I think it's this um, it's this it's something that I probably rant about all the time I say all the time it's this rise of self it's the rise of individualism that says hey I'll look after me so I'm not going to help and support those because they should be looking after themselves it's neoliberalism it's self-responsibility isn't it it's all of those things and that's the bubble we're trapped in the bubble we're trapped in is as long as it's not affecting me i can look at the news and go oh that's really sad and that's really terrible but we don't do anything not we as in us three as individuals but we don't do anything collectively as a society because we want to protect our own society and i think that's kind of I think that that's the fundamental problem. That's the position we've arrived at. We've arrived at a selfish position. We've arrived at a, in, at a selfish moment in uh, in our in our um, the way we think about the world. We're horrified by it, but we do nothing about it because uh, because it's not our thing to do anything about. It's their thing to do something about, and it's their fault that they've caused whatever, brought to power whoever. It's their fault that they're in that position because they've not looked after their resources, their money, whatever, as, as well as they should have, why should we help? And I, I fundamentally think that there is the problem that we've, that we've got um, as a society. And that, I think, what is what led to Trumpism, um, Johnsonism, if that's even a thing, Brexit, all of those kind of things. I think it's that sort of mentality that's led us to, to this potential turning point in history where people are becoming, people are becoming morally aware that actually that's not if we are a global society then that's not the way to live you know this little island of ours this little 
you know that, that that's that's not the way to be we have to we have to help other people in difficult situations that's my rant over <laughs> Got a bit randy, that didn't it? Absolutely. That's but nice. but do, but do you think this is Jamie's example? Is it um, a good example of uh, Tracer Marcus's point that it's self-interest and the sort of power, strength, Trump does win. But maybe his point to Socrates would be: you can have all all this, espouse all this virtue and justice, when the push comes to shove, self-interest trumps. Yeah. I think the, the really interesting. Well, Peter. Go on. Peter, Pete, Peter, uh, is it Peter Singer? I think it's Peter Singer, a, a, a modern philosophy writer. He, he gives this example in, in one of his books about, um, uh, he, he asks the question, if if, a, if you were in uh, New York or whatever, and a child was drowning in the river and you had your most expensive pair of shoes on, um, and there was no time to kind of take your shoes off, would you just jump in with the shoes on to save the child? And it's like, well, well, of course you would. Of course you would just do that. You wouldn't think twice about ruining your 200 pound pair of brogues or whatever to jump in and, and save the child. And it's like, well, how about you send that 200 pounds to Africa then to save some, save, save more than one child yeah. in Africa. You could save multiple children in Africa for that same 200 pounds. And, and immediately ask people like Christy, go, well, oh yeah, but you know, well, it's 200 quid, isn't it? You know what I mean? That's a lot of money, but you wouldn't hesitate. Um, in that moment for somebody kind of who was in front of you but it's the distance the distance um, means we can we, we, well, yeah absolutely yeah you've got a relationship with that child drowning in the water haven't you because you're in front of them you're confronted with the, you that reality that you're not you're not confronted with it and he, he makes he makes a number of points and i think quite quite contentious i suppose in a way he talks about kind of the amount of money that's invested in cancer research that saves relatively few people Compared to how much you could, how you, how much you could uh, do with that amount of money in the African continent to save people with something simple like mosquito nets or whatever, you know, that whole kind of thing, and and it's huge the amount of people you could save or, or, or you know, or um, sanitary products for women and, and those or contraception or, or AIDS AIDS uh, medication, those kind of things. You're talking about saving hundreds of thousands of people. Whereas the money we spend on 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 uh, on very serious, very serious and very awful problems that confront us, to save a handful of people, where's the where's the justice in that in a, in a global economy? And it's the same thing with the, it's the same thing with the uh, with with the oxygen situation, isn't it? I suppose. That's a good point. Mm. I think the, the the interesting thing with George's example is that um, Socrates and in Plato's book is his solution is almost as bad as is the problem that they started with he, so he mm. comes up with a very a very uh, an extremely i've got in, in my head i've got like an egg it always comes up in my head as an egg the republic because it's so closed it's like <clears throat> it's a case of we'll we'll give we'll give people a religion and have different castes in that religion and within three generations they'll believe it and that will control them with this religion and um, children won't be raised by a family they'll be you know they'll be raised in, in it was over 20 years since i read this book so i might be wrong um will be raised in this way anyone that um any child that is unhealthy will be cast out so there's infant side in there so so th 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 there is no room within this egg Egg's my thing. Probably doesn't work in anywhere else's head. There is no room in this egg for any kind of change because it's everything's is is within it. There's no there's no going out for and if anything's different from it. It's cast out because it can't change. It's, it's, the system has to be in a never ending change. So it's a very very extremely closed system. And I think what's really really interesting, and if you look at society, is I think that's what's been attempted when there's been a problem. Um, people have attempted a close society to solve the problem. I think this is probably where we're going to at the moment. So we had, mm. hit, I've seen a problem with with um, the way humans were evolving and the way money was being used within society. So he had a problem with that. So he, he tried to create a close society with with the third right. And, and then we had Karl Marx, um, who seen a problem um, with capitalism. And he, he tried to change, he, he tried to create a close society to kind of solve the problem. So I think it, it goes back to that point you made in the very beginning, Stephen, 
um, is that we're, we're, th these things are repeating time and time again. So this was kind of played out in the Republic in a few hundred pages, you know, two and a half thousand years ago. And yet we're seeing this happening now. And then are, mm. are we going down a, down a direction now to kind of <clears throat> to change something? Or, or are we just continuing using the same the same problems? Are we are we looking at closed societies now? And, and, and is, is that where we want to go? Are we looking at more open societies? What I suppose that, George? Sorry, um, even uh, what one no, no, inter no. interesting thing that's come up over the, um, the last week or so is all the great cities of um, the UK are predominantly liberal cities. Sadi Khan, we're getting to London, Manchester, um, Edinburgh, um, all liberal. Um, but the dominant politics of the UK is conservatism, um, Boris Johnson. So there's that disconnect there. I wonder whether. Uh, similar to the Republic and uh, Jamie's uh, egg situation is, is it could one good outcome be is that if you close down responsibility for who's responsible for certain things in a certain area, immediately you have a greater um, level of res um, what's the word like con connectivity? Um, oh, well, you're, you were responsible for that rather than some distant figure away. And I, I, I think there's strengths and weaknesses to it but i think it, it it's very much a positive thing I, i'm all for it um and and it, not i don't think we need to go down american politics too much but um in the the right wing um in america very much happy with different cities having vastly different attitudes it's sort of a, um a confederacy of ideas so they don't see a problem whilst they want everyone um, to be against abortion, they wouldn't see it. one city being pro and one city being against. And you have, you have the people that agree with that live there. Um, they have guns in Texas. You go to another part, um, they wouldn't have any. Um, so this sort of uh, confederacy of ideas, sort of federalist approach. I wonder if that's sort of where we're going down in in the UK. And in, 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 just interesting that. That ties in with your little egg, Jamie. I think. Yeah, and I think what well, it, it raises that, that that old question, isn't it? Is is about um, are you are you looking at liberty? Is it on liberty? Is it John Mills? I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure, we were going to read that book one day. Yeah, sure. Um. So we'll are we are we looking at liberty and our right to choose and the right living in the state we want, um, without state interference, I suppose. Or are we looking at state control? And state saying, you know, to to combat what Stephen was saying is like this selfishness is like I'm all right, Jack. Is is there a role of state to say, hang on, no, no, we want to make sure that everyone's okay, rather than the individual. And I think that 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 that, that that's where the that's where the, the problem lies, isn't it? The individual and the state. Where 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 do where do we lie? So so the the state is the left wing, and the individual is the right wing, and 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 that's where we're having this tension, isn't it? <clears throat> I think it is, and and, and the last the I suppose that was it was it the last great the last great experiment in 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 what you do there was was Russia, wasn't it? You know, and and kind of communism was the last great experiment in kind of that kind of that kind of idea, and and we all know where that's kind of ended up as uh, probably you know, one of the most well, it's it's as corrupt as anywhere else, uh, I suppose, is is the is the thing, and and probably has been has been throughout its history. Um, so so yeah and I, and i think that that's the problem isn't it that uh, that left wing is seen as extreme now i think this is the problem we've got being left wing is seen as extreme because it's seen as taking us down that path of of state control of kind of you know everything being took back under control of the state and um it mean it means that uh, shareholder value is impacted because you know the water is not is, is not owned is not owned by individuals or individual companies or or, or rail or whatever it happens to be. Um, so I, I think maybe maybe but it, history it, yeah, but it means maybe history's been. Maybe history's being used against us. Uh, that, I think that's what I'm saying. I think with, I think that was the problem that uh, Jeremy Corbyn, who who I'm a great admirer of, had, had to had to cont contend with, wasn't it that he was seen as being. He was seen as being a communist. Well, he was nowhere near. He was nowhere remotely near being a communist. 
he was a he was a socialist you know what i mean and and they're, they're quite different things but now the media have conflated them together and this is now where we end up with we end up with uh with 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 hartlepool voting a, you know voting for a, a a tory council and boris johnson you know the inflatable boris johnson outside was outside of the town hall you know and kind of how does that appeal? How does that appeal? And it appeals, I think, because the media and 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 the 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 right have have, have done a hatchet job um, on what the left actually is, and they've made the left seem more sinister than because than the right, even though the right is more sinister than the left. I think you're dead right because if if we had state control um, in the left, um, would in India would we have the same problem and people not getting oxygen if we're and we had state control as as we have. You know, that gives us the NHS service. State control gives us education and um, free education to a school to a children, no matter where they come from, the background or their income. And um, and everything else, everything else, and um, where it comes from comes from a form of socialism. And I think there's a conversation that we're having before we start recording this, is that is people don't recognise that. It's, I think that's the point you're trying to make, isn't it, Stephen? Is that mm. people don't recognise that as socialism. So people don't recognise the fact that we don't have to worry about um, sending kids to school. We don't have to worry about being ill because we know we're going to get looked after. We don't have to worry about bins being put out. And we don't have to, you know, all these types of things. And 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 I don't think there's many other countries in the world have this level of socialism that that we have. And um, I have family in over in Ireland. They they pay companies to come and empty the bins, um, and but, but, which results in massive huge problems of fly tipping they have to mm. they have to pay to go and see the gp you know, so so all mm. these little things and um, they have some sources because they have a they have you know an education system and things like that but it's we live in a, in a socialist state and i think the problem with that is it's been eroded and it's been gradually eroded and we're watching it being eroded and people are voting for its erosion and that's the, mm. that's the problem isn't it because they see they see the the liberty my liberty is more important than the state control. And if you would read any yeah. anything on Facebook that, that that's politically minded, you, you, you're going to get that. You no, know, my liberty is more important than, than the state control. But they don't yeah. they, they've, they've, they've turned blind, turned absolute blind to the fact that state control has given them all these fantastic things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they are being eroded. Mm -hmm. Second round over. <laughs> And if and if you're not doing all if you, if you're not doing all right out of that it, it it's your fault and I, and I think that's um, uh, take this down, I'm thinking taking this down social work route here radically I tell you what given given that that's the, the, the that's the world we all the three of us operate in you know and it's it's that thing isn't it that um, social workers are, are are tasked with 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 helping people whose you know lives maybe aren't going as swimmingly as 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 people on Facebook would have us believe are etc. Um, and I think it, it, you know issues like issues like um, poverty um, are seen as the problem of the individual, aren't they? Rather than a, a kind of systemic problem, uh, they're, they're seen as in, in, well. If, if if you've got no money, if you've got no money, then it must be something you're you're doing wrong. You know, not not something that the state's doing wrong in terms of I don't know, minimum wages or job opportunities or education or whatever. It's it's actually it's actually your fault. So there's this kind of well, it's the blame culture thing, isn't it? You know, it's kind of you know uh, Norman Tebbit, get on your bike. You know what I mean? My you know my dad Norman Tebbit said, got on his bike and went to the next village and found a job. And um, that's not the world we live in now, is it really? But it's that. Um, it's that uh, that you that. could have been prime minister, Stephen, if you. If it's the fact that that you know that, that most prime ministers in our country went to Eden. It's just just coincidence, isn't it? It's like, you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. that's just sheer coincidence. We have the same opportunities as they have, but I think people actually believe that. Mm -hmm. and that that's the worrying thing, and I think they believe it because mm -hmm. we live in this system. We we'll have um we we'll have the monarchy, you know, the monarchy in, in, in place. I've got nothing against them individuals. They all seem like nice people, despite the family problems that we all seem to have. Um, but the, 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 the simple fact is that their children are born with more rights than our children. So if, yeah. if that's our starting point in society, um, how can we have an equal society? How can we turn around and say, well, you know, if you go to Eden, you've got just the same chances to be a prime minister as if you went to a comprehensive school. 
is we can't say that because we live in a, in a, in an unequal society. The starting point is unequal yeah. because the people we look up to, the society looks up to, or have more rights, and that's filtered down, doesn't it? That filters down to to society. And you, you, you can see when when Prince Philip died and the way people reacted towards that. I mean, I'm sure I'm, I don't know. He might have been a lovely guy and all that sort of stuff. And so he's had the Queen losing her husband, and I think it's tragic when anyone passes away. Um, but the way the public reacted towards that, well, he didn't know. Um, so, we, mm-hmm. we, so but that's how we revere people who have more yeah, rights yeah. than us. Legally, they have more rights than us, and and that, it, as I say, that filled us down um, into 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 the class system that we got. And why we we'll have this class system? And I, I don't think there's an answer to it. But why we we'll have this class system? And I suppose it begs the question. Is is this class system that we we'll have? Um, this egg, is it the same as the egg? Have we got a closed system in that we can't penetrate and we can't break through? And if you if you do try and change it and change it, you get ridiculed and ostracised. Mm-hmm. So is it is it is it like the republic? We have a system where we have the queen, then we have you know, those people beneath her, then we have the aristocracy then we have the rich the extreme rich and then we'll have these you know, and we'll have the system that works so we will go to work we will pay with taxes and we will buy goods and by by buying goods we're kind of feeding into the system and this is is this a closed egg and can we change i suppose it's a question that needs to be begged to be asked because we haven't mm. we've had a we've had a, we've had a stab of it since the second world war and it's kind of and we're kind of ro- rolling back to where we started from mm. Question is, can we change? Is is, is my question. Mm. I think um, one thing that's spinning in my mind is Jamie and yourself were talking, Stephen, is um, the social work, and I banged on about this before, so forgive us, I'm boring you. And this is uh, that essay competition that I did get in, <laughs> but I, I'll have my run about it now. How how that how what exactly what Jamie's talked about in Hartlepool, I can link in here, is. Um, is th- how that meted out that differential in in the class system is meted out, um, and I think the social workers should be far bigger on this. Is is brute facts like life expectancy, and 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 importantly healthy life expectancy. So the people in Hartlepool that voted a conservative um, candidate for the first time in forty years, who lived most of their life in the Cayman Islands, blah blah blah. Let's not stick on it. These people die six years younger than the national average, and and before that they'll have most likely to have unhealthy lives. That's how the dif- disadvantage is is met out on them. And you could have the argument all day that it's personal choice, but then you'd have to have the separate argument of why are people in Hartlepool making all those choices? Surely the community, it, there must be a reason that the whole community is walking in a certain way, then go down to posh part of London or Surrey and they're not. That, if that is the answer, even if you blame the individual, why are everyone, why are all those individuals doing it together? So who's going to come up with the solution? And I think as social workers, that should be our space to occupy because what we do in children's services, um, pick the 10 poorest towns in Britain and I'll show you the 10 poorest towns that have got the highest adoption rates, CP rates, mm. um, possibly even sexual abuse, all these things mm. that all follows poverty. So all we're doing is tracking poverty through the country um, and, and meeting out um, the Children Act, um, taking away people's liberty, exactly what we're talking about, without ever dealing with the problems which are transmitted on a community level, not a bad parent, this household level. And I just don't think we've got any answers to that problem at all. And it's, and no, it's, I don't think and, and it's sad, uh, but, but we'll not, it'll not change until you deal with why that community? One example is I read something somewhere. Um, say you put, say you put your child in the nearest school in the northeast. The parents just drop them off, collect them on the night time. If you, if you in Kent, upperly mobile, a lot of them have the policy of that parent has to volunteer, has to get involved with that school. They're expected to. You don't. The, the, it's just a given that they'll be heavily involved in that school. That is a complete antithesis. What happens? And immediately that creates opportunities, it creates a community, it's a richer environment. We could do that tomorrow at the drop of a hat. We could say, 
right? If you want your, your child in Biddick Hall Primary um, School, you're going to have to volunteer, and we're offering these parent classes. That could be the rule tomorrow. And immediately you'd have a change in the community. But it, it goes back to my earlier point. In Athens, um, the citizen had responsibilities you had to meet to be a citizen. It wasn't just a one-way street. I think the one criticism of how uh, <laughs> socialism is writ as Jamie's example in, in the UK, there's limited responsibility on the individual to give back. And that, that's when you can easily go down a right-wing route. But if you create opportunities for people to give back, that becomes a richer society rather than I'll see you at the job centre or ring this line if your benefits are stopped. That, it just seems to be an idiotic way of approaching the state from the other way, if that makes any sense. Mm. It does, it does. It, it does. It, 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 makes me, it makes me wonder when you hearing you say that, it makes me wonder whether, whether what social work has ended up becoming becoming and maybe it always has been it probably always has been is is where where um we're sorting out the problems left over from inappropriate sorts of government government ideologies aren't we we're left we're left to sort those problems out and 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 um rather than uh like you said rather than uh rather than a, a, a different ideology sorting those problems out once and for all, which is what we've been talking about, isn't it? Once and for all, sort these issues out. Um, social workers are left with meagre resources and, and meagre time because of caseloads to to sort it out the, the, the best that they can. But but I, I like this. This is um, it strikes me that what you're suggesting, George, is a kind of almost erratic social work of let's not just keep doing it the way the policy framework tells us to do it. Let's let's come up with some different constructive ideas that actually engage people in communities uh you know rather than rather than just keep putting sticky plasters over things we need a different way of thinking don't we which i think is what you kind of suggested is well exactly right? and, I, and i know jamie's passionate on, the, on this from another level that all the people some of his ideas about yeah. why not how we could group people together with similar issues um to streamline services and something i want to talk about particularly in the pandemic is how all the people's needs some without dementia um, have basically been prisoners in care homes. Um, how, how how did the state keep these people inside? Because it must have been a locked door. It, 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 it's got to have been. And, mm -hmm. and how there hasn't caused uproar. I've seen I've seen one thing on community care, but that's a massive change. To pe I, I bet you they've probably got more outside. People on murder prisoners, uh, people on mur murder charges probably got more outdoor exercise than people in care homes. Potentially, um, it's, it's, and why? It's, why do we let that happen? I, I know why, but I, I also don't know why. I mean, there's, there's a legal route, and the, the legal route is there's something in Article Five of the Human Rights Act, which kind of allows, um, it act in a, in a way, when there's um, when there's things like the the virus going around. So, however, and if you, this, this is this is where it kind of. The, and I, th I think the, the, the problem, the problem isn't with how we responded to it. The, it I think it highlighted the problem that was already there, because because mm -hmm. the issue is 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 it, again we, we, we're going back to this problem of the rights of the individual and the rights of the state, um, or the rights of the, of the collective. So the rights of the individual is I want I want to go out and see my daughter, and um, everybody else has a right to go. Hang on, this, this is guidelines or this is the law. I choose whether I break it or not. I choose whether I break the law or I choose whether I break the guidelines or not. That's my choice. And I'll suffer the consequences because of that. The consequences to us is a fine. The consequences to, to those people is to be made homeless. Because, and I don't think it ever happened, but um, but that's a risk because they care at home are saying, and hang on, we can't have you going out and bringing this virus back into us because it's devastating. And you can, you can see the argument, can't you? you can, well, yeah, I sympathise with that because if that mm. person goes out, brings COVID back into this care home, <laughs> twenty odd people will die. Yeah. So, just, really, just did... so, so I think I think the problem the problem isn't with the response to it. I don't think there, I don't think there was an alternative, and I think I can see why people should be in uproar. But and I think on an individual basis we should look at each individual case. But in generalised speaking, I don't think there was a I don't think there was a solution to it. The problem with it is that we're warehousing people. We're thinking all these people have a, are 
need to be grouped together because it's cheaper and easier mm. to put to put a bunch of people in a, in a completely alien environment to 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 the modern human family life. We're going to put them all together, and then when this pandemic happened, they're thinking, well, "What do we do? There's nothing we can do apart from not at all. Otherwise, the pandemic's coming in." So, I think the problem is how we how we how we're managing as a society to look after our to our elderly people while in, while it's in this capitalist state where we've got to kind of earn. It's what we're, we're having. You know, each family member needs needs to go out to, uh, in, to uh, earn so they can spend. So how do we do that? And that, I think that's it's exposed the problem rather than created one. It's exposed the problem of how we are treating our elderly people by putting them all in the care home because they it can't deal and can't cope with something as strong as the pandemic. What? It, well, I'll make, I'll make two points. When the state transmitted the virus by releasing people from hospital, the same the same medics and um, people in charge of hospitals that made all the restriction decisions were part of all the meetings when they did it. And that was the main cause of the outbreaks in care homes. Yeah. No one's been held responsible for that decision making, mm. despite the <laughs> same people being very clear about the guidance and restricting things. So does, does, if the state can exert control, surely it has responsibility and should be held accountable. But it, it almost just feels not that I want people sacked in, in inquiries. I, I, I don't think that, but it just seems to be, oh, well, it's just forgotten about, isn't it? And, and mm. Mm. because they've done a good job with the vaccine rollout, it just seems in a dimmer distance past. Um, mm. Mm. And I think to go back to India, I guess where they wouldn't have care homes, apart from the very rich, I guess that's the person with the granny in the back of the taxi looking for the, the bottle of oxygen now, isn't it? That's, <laughs> that, that's yeah. extreme. Mm. And, and, and the final point, I'm surprised we didn't get a lot of people that were working from home saying, yeah, I'll have my mom back out of the care home and I'll bring her home. I wonder whether, going back to the self-interest route, when push came to shove, people didn't want that responsibility. Mm. Wow. I suppose the, the the issue is, George. And I think it's been raised a few times about what you say about the, the medics placing people into the care homes and spreading the illness. Is what option? To, and, I, and I think this is because because what I said before, it, it highlighted a problem that we didn't really know that we had. Is because what options did those, those those medics have? Because we couldn't mm. keep people in the hospital wards because we're filling up. Because the hospital was worth them very, very fast. We didn't use Nightingale hospitals, so there could be some criticism for that. But we didn't have a staff for Nightingale hospitals, is my understanding. So, what, what, what do we do with these people? We're constantly mm -hmm. back home, they're too ill to go back home. Uh, look, uh, I, I agree. It's a complex. Well, the hotels, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, hotels were closed. I don't know. You could put them there for 20 days, something like that. You look after them. Uh, do you know what I mean? So, it's they're, a bit, they're, they're, yeah, but the, the, if you play the numbers. The care uh, homes are who are, lose, who are who are losing business because people are dying. Mm. They're, they're, they're saying, hang on. Bring them here, we'll isolate them and we look after them. And people yeah. are going to ask, ask too many questions again. Okay, there's a solution. Because yeah. we haven't got time to plan this because this has happened. I think it's exposed a problem rather than rather, that was already there. But I was just going to, one, one statistic though the whole ball game in terms of numbers is people over 75 in care homes. That it, The deaths would have looked so dramatically different if we just protected that one group of people. You could have let the, you could have let the, almost, you could have had the herd immunity argument with where it's played out. If you just protected those people, it, the most vulnerable people in care, if you'd done that, it would have been played completely different. How, so, the question is, how it, would you have done it? No, mm -hmm. you, you, I agree. It's not an easy answer, but where we've gone down, the billions spent, all of this, you could have done anything. Do you see what I mean? You could have done anything and, and, and it would have been cheaper almost put them in no, Portland and Paris. I, I agree I agree in, in hindsight um and I'm not wanting to defend the government at all as you well know um I just think it's it, I think it's just I think it, the outcome was devastating it was wrong from what we did I, I'm, I'm struggling to think of what with a short such a short period of time what the right answer was I, I, I just don't know I don't know and I think because I think the problem was already there Perhaps. Do you think this will be a change? I'm gonna... do, do you think this will be a change to people getting put in care homes, Jamie? Do you think it'll change people's like families thinking, oh, Granny's 75, getting a bit doddery. It's been such bad press for the care homes. Do you think it'll change people? Do you know? Nah, no, I think I think I think there needs to be a major shift in the way we care for um, the elderly. I think there's been a bit of a major shift 
in how we care for people with learning disabilities, um, but there's such a smaller proportion of people. Um, so I think if we're going to have a, the same shift for people who are um, elderly, it will cost a, you know, it'll, it'll probably cost the same amount of money that we we'll spend on this pandemic. But we value, we value as do we do we value, you know, uh, the monetary system more than we value the care. That's a question. I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to draw us to a close, fellas, um, with this interesting interesting conversation. Um, maybe 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 we have a final. We normally have a final thought for social work, but maybe we just need a final final thought in general here, I suppose. So so um, you know I, I'll I'll go with one, then then hand over to you guys to do that. But uh, you know I agree with with Jamie. I think this the, the rise of self means that we. We, we tend to probably not want to look after our elderly relatives now in in family situations and the way maybe maybe that was done historically but but the the the, the thing the, the thing that I'm left considering is that these things that we raise as social workers we do know about them um, and is there a role for a more radical social work? to challenge these things because i think social workers um because of the systems we work in because of the the way social work is done there is not room to challenge these things um and and how do we kind of turn that around so social work can be can be more radical and can challenge systems uh, i don't expect an answer an answer to that but i think that's something we need to think about how does social work challenge systems rather than be be part of them a final thought from either of you two guys first. I'll give my final thought because George looks like he's brooding over something very, you know, one of, one of George's brilliant lines. I think what this, what this conversation has highlighted to me is uh, it's kind of a need to break down what left and what right is. And maybe it's breaking down as that, you know, the collective and the singular. I think they've both got benefits and they've both got drawbacks. Um, rather than rather than kind of this imagery that we we'll have of the right being you know you know these, these money, people sitting on you know big piles of money and and then the left is you know communist worker camps you know and <clears throat> let's think of what it is we're, we're talking about you know individual liberty across regarding the benefits of state control and and, and so where in so where should we sit with politics and have a a real look at that and i think it's, it's social i think we have a we need to kind of understand where we where we are as social workers as individuals and, and then where we are as um a profession and then and then where does that fit in with society and, and, and what's the role george very good i i just want to stress um the value of community being a, the uh, um potential antidote to corruption um in this distance thing with politics, I think if people are given the opportunity, a bit like um, the positive view of Athens, to be responsible for their own community, to have that two-way street thing, I think that would be a massive enhancement. But I, I think what we need, and social work needs to be part of it, I think we need some trailblazing areas. I think we need an area to do it completely different, and maybe the successes, but and be allowed to fail or succeed. And if it's very difficult because you'd have to say to people, do you want to live like this or not? That that Ultimately, if you're going to do something radical, people are going to have to have a choice and have to get on board or not. But the people of Hartlepool, exactly what you were saying, Stephen, want a radical change. I, I don't know if they're going to get it, but I think that's what people are screaming out for. But I, uh, you've almost got to trust in the person to deliver it before they actually deliver it. So how it's a bit of a, a loop. Um but yeah, I, th I, th I really think social work could play a part, but I think we need to start small somehow. 